Hi, my name is Dr. Ross Hauser. Welcome to the Hauser Next Center here in Fort Myers, Florida. Kind of a relatively common thing we see at the Hauser Next Center here is numbness on one side of the body or down one arm or just down one leg. So I'm going to talk today about just, you know, when you have numbness. So I want to explain the difference between true numbness and numbiness. So numbness is where you really do feel that one side of the body isn't as sensitive to touch as another side. That's true numbness. Numbiness is when you have the sensation that something's numb, but you can feel everything fine. And numbiness is often from ligaments. I talk about this in the book, Curing Chronic Pain with Prolotherapy, but numbiness is often ligaments. And ligaments, they refer pain just like a nerve refers pain. So you could have a ligament injury in your elbow and it's sensitive to touch and it give you numbiness you know, in your hand. Like that's one example. So if you can feel fine but you have a numb sensation, there's a good chance that it's a ligament issue. Now, Hauser's law number two is that if you have a chronic symptom, if you follow the neurology, the neurology will lead to ligamentous joint instability. So for the person who has, they're like, Doc, I'm just telling you, man, the whole right side of my uh, body is numb. And I'm just, you know, like it just feels numb. And if you follow the neurology, the neurology of that's going to lead to what? The brain, right? So the neurology leads to the brain. So what affects, what ligamentous joint instability affects the brain? That's going to be the neck because all fluid flow that goes into and out of the brain goes through the neck. And especially if somebody has clicking, popping, grinding in their neck or neck pain, that's a sign that it's a neck issue. Sensation in the human body, touch, sensation, pain goes through the spinal cord in the uh, posterior column. So this is the posterior part of the uh, spinal cord, the posterior columns, the back of the spinal cord. That's where touch sensation, pain, and vibratory sense gets to the brain. It goes in the back of the spinal cord called the posterior columns. And then eventually it reaches the brain and then the brain feels something or doesn't feel something. Like it, could, it could feel pain, it could feel sharp, tingly sensations or this video, it senses numbness, like there's numbness. So, so you're looking at, if you follow the neurology, the neurology is saying, hey, it's related to the brain. So there must be some nerve tract that's affected that goes to the brain. Now this is how the spinal cord should look. This is how it normally looks. So see where this is round and right here there's spinal cord tension. See how there's sp spinal cord tension just means the dark part is the spinal cord. So when you start having destructive changes of the lumbar curve, the thoracic curve or the cervical curve, usually in the patients that I see it's the cervical curve, there's destructive changes because people are looking down at their cell phones for 10 hours a day, 12 hours a day, 14 hours a day, or they have bad posture looking at the computer. So this destructive change in the cervical curve causes elongation and tension on the spinal cord. So the spinal cord goes from being round to being oblong. And then basically on sagittal view, what you see is, do you see here back here where it looks like the bones almost touching the spinal cord? The white here is the cerebral spinal fluid. So doesn't it look like there's a cerebral spinal fluid block right here? So this particular patient from this level down could feel that they have numbness or they don't have good sensation in their arm, in their trunk, in their leg. There's plenty of patients that I see that believe that it's almost like there's a disconnect between the brain and the rest of the body. Like almost like there's a plug that's been unplugged, right? Doc, I'm just telling you, man, it just doesn't feel right on the right side of my body. 
So what I'm looking at is on an MRI, you could see where there's, looks like there's spinal cord tension on the back here. So that could give you what? Numbness on one side of the body. And this just shows how much the spinal cord and the various nerves of the body move when you move. So if there's a part of the cervical spinal cord that's under tension, it's not gonna move that much. So it means that when the person rotates their head, that part of the spinal cord is stuck there. So that can block nerve transmission. So if the tension is on the back of the spinal cord, what ends up happening is, especially if it's just on one side, the person says, I'm just telling you, I, I don't feel, I, I have numbness on that one side. So that's kind of what, what we're looking at. And this is just another pictorial of the person has destructive neck changes. They have ligament injury in the upper cervical spine here. There's a block here. And then eventually there's gonna be fluid, cerebral spinal fluid that accumulates in the brain. Now, if the fluid mostly accumulates on one side of the brain, then that part of the brain then can also be dysfunctional and give you the sensation of numbness just on one side of the body. It can even be where if it just affects like the face, the part of the brain that has to do with sensation of the face, the person could say, I'm just telling you, I just don't feel like it's almost like I have this numb feeling or numbiness feeling on the one side of my face. So in the diagnostic testing that we do in the office here, we would be able to tell whether there's a block in like the jugular veins on one side. And then on MRI, you would see this fluid accumulating like right here around the brain stem and the cerebellum and of course the cerebrum. So this is kind of another pictorial where the person has a block from a ligament injury in their neck causing destructive neck changes of their curve, which I call cervical destructure you get increased pressure on certain parts of the brain and depending on what part it is, it could give you a numbness on that side of the body. If it affects the cerebellum, the person might have balance issues. They might, you know, with walking, they might have trouble walking. And here, a dynamic MRI study, and then you could see where there's not a normal neck curve, it's, it's a sigmoid curve, it's like an S here and you can see all kinds of constrictions or tension on the spinal cord there, which could give you numbness on one side of the body. When you have a change in one part of the, the spine, it can affect another part. So in other words, a person could have a herniated disc that doesn't cause any symptoms until they have a change in their neck curve because the nervous system is like a tree, right? Yeah, if you push on the trunk, very little happens, but if you were to uh, hang from one of the branches, right, the whole tree might change. So when you have flexion of the cervical spine because you have a reversal of the neck curve, that's gonna put tension all down the nerve tree here from the spinal cord to the distal nerve roots and that's when a herniated disc can become symptomatic. Herniated discs are very common on MRI and they can be symptomatic, but sometimes they're asymptomatic. They don't cause any problems until there's tension on another part of the uh, spinal cord. And a problem with tension and compression of a nerve root into the leg would just give you what? Numbness in the leg, numbness in the leg. And again, a kyphotic curvature of the neck causes tension in the spinal cord that can go all the way down. So somebody could say, no, I don't have any neck symptoms. I don't have any arm symptoms. How could you say it's from a neck problem when I just have numbness in the leg? But this is the mechanism by which that occurs. And then this is just a pictorial that a person has excessive 
spinal motion and that it's putting tension on a certain part of the spinal cord and depending on what part it puts tension on it could give you numbness it could give pain we have patients who say doc i'm just telling you my legs vibrating or my back's vibrating that's because the nerve fibers that have to do with vibration are in the same location that has to do with touch and pain so some people would feel pain and other people it's like i'm vibrating and then when there's a cervical destructure or change in the neck curve it can affect the vagus nerve and the vagus nerve innervates everything so some people will even say i'm just telling you i have a numbness sensation in my throat Right? I have a numbness sensation in my throat. I have a numbness in this part of my body. So when it involves places where the vagus nerve goes, then there may be where there's destructive neck changes. It's blocking the flow of electrical impulses through the vagus nerve. And that's where you can get a numb feeling inside the body that can be from the vagus nerve. And the first thing that happens when a nerve's under tension or the spinal cord's under tension, you just get electrical impulses start getting blocked. But if the tension continues, eventually there's going to be nerve cells that die. And when nerve cells die, we call that neuropathy. So that's what neuropathy is, that there's actually nerve damage. So you go from a healthy nerve to where the nerve electrical impulses are getting blocked the nerve gets inflamed and eventually some of the nerve cells die. And so the nerve gets smaller and smaller and smaller, which we can measure. The vagus nerve, we measure the median nerve of the wrist. We'll measure it here by ultrasound and we can even measure the sciatic nerve to see if it's the normal size. Now, how would somebody know that the numb that they're feeling on one side of their body is related to the neck. Well, if somebody had clicking, popping, grinding of the neck, they have neck tension, they have, they have other symptoms that relate to a ligamentous upper cervical instability, such as digestive problems, tachycardia, dizziness, those things would give a clue that the problem's in the neck. That's why in the office here, we do a lot of diagnostic tests for the neck because the neck affects the brain. I explained how it can even affect the lower back. And when ligamentous cervical instability is found or there's bad changes of the neck curve, we do cervical curve correction and a treatment that helps tighten the ligaments called prolotherapy. So I'd encourage anybody who's never heard the term prolotherapy, see some of our other videos on prolotherapy.